Hi everyone, Crypto Carlos Fandango here again. Well, I'm going to have a busy couple of days, so just to give you an update, um, all the bits of hardware that I was waiting on in order to do compressed plots have arrived. Um, so starting off with the, with the cabinet, you'll see now that the third NAS is now activated. Um, just with one disc at the moment, and this is the 6 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf drive that I purchased on eBay. I was a little bit dubious about it at £50, which is a really good price, um, but seems okay, seems to be operational, uh, accepted by the NAS, so I was happy with that, and so I've ordered a second one. Um, couldn't really afford to go for the full four at the moment, you know, times are hard, just um, taking it easily. Um, that's why I didn't go for 8 terabyte drives, they're a little bit more expensive. So I decided that we'll, we'll keep this one a, a 6 terabyte um, NAS unit. But um, all looking good there, so that means we're ready now to start plotting um, C7 plots to that. So that'll be the next thing that we'll be doing uh, with the plotter machine here that's got the 3060 Ti in it ready. 128 gigs of RAM and we've got a um, NVMe in there drive just to uh, you know make the plot creations quicker um, so that's all ready so what I'll be doing later on is um, and I'll show you it in operation and the configuration is downloading the latest Chia software um, not running it as a full node but kicking off the um, hopefully blade bit 128 gig plots to C7 level from the command line and of course in order to do this our plotting machine which is down there, which is the Dell Precision T3620, will need a graphics card capable of decompressing plots. And that's where this comes in, which is the GT1030 GeForce, which I also paid around, I think it was £54 for. Um, it's got both, both brackets, it's got the long bracket and the short bracket in the pack, so I thought that would be good in case I want to move it at some point, but it's got a massive heat sink on it, so it's going to be totally silent and hopefully keep itself cool enough. So um, that will be going into that plot, uh, sorry, into that farming machine at some point today. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit nervous about that, given the problems I've had with that machine recently and the power switch. Um, but I, I intend to unplug everything and put the card in, and uh, just hope and pray that it comes back up again. Um, so that's the plan, so let's crack on with that. As I say, the NAS unit is uh, is running. You've probably just heard the fan kick in there. Um, it's just sitting there doing nothing at the moment, so it's just probably just kicking in to cool itself. Um, might have been doing some uh, updates of the virus scanning software or something. That's usually what causes it to do that. But um, we'll crack on, create some plots, get the farmer updated, and then we'll have a look and see um, what's going on. Okay, so on the plotter machine, I've downloaded the latest version of the, the Chair Client software 2.1.1. Um, let it start up. You obviously get those firewall warnings that you get about the running the full node and the farmer, which you have to accept um, initially. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to close this down. We're not going to use this at all because we're going to fire it off from the command line. Okay, let's have a look at some stats then for this first C7 plot using the 3060 Ti on a 128 gig system. So the very first thing it does is set up the um, configuration, sort bits and pieces, um, and then it tells you that uh, the CUDA plotter has um, got enough RAM. I've left off plot checks for the moment. You can switch that on so it will check each plot it creates to make sure it's valid and either delete it and create a new one um, but for now, because I'm just doing a test and creating one plot, we're just going to see what it does. Um, then it does all the um, sort of allocation, sort of bits and pieces. So you get a lot of um, detail here about the, you're using a sufficient um, CUDA version on your GPU, etc., etc. Enough memory and cache and all that. And then it allocates buffers. Um, so providing you've got enough system resources, that bit will be okay. And then it starts generating the plot. And as you can see from the plot name here, it's a K32 to compression level 7. Now, 
it goes through various um, operations, very similar to what you see before. Um, you know, the various um, tables being created and uh, doing its business. Um, it gives you a completion time for each phase. So phase one was a quite a long one of 669. Phase two, 44.36 seconds. Um, and then right at the end, when it gets to the end, you get the total plot creation time. Um, for me, first, just creating a single plot, it's created it in 26.78 minutes. So that's better than the sort of 48, 50 minutes for a standard plot being created just using uh, non-GPU methods. Um, so I'm, it's fairly okay. It's not brilliant. I was expecting a little bit more, but I, you know, this machine is old processing wise. Um, you know, you can probably get much better performance from a, a later graphics card as well, but it's what I'm using. So 28 minutes, yeah, it's cut, it's cut it down by about half or whatever. Um, and I'm only using one um, NVMe in here. I'm not using two, so it's doing all of it on, on one uh, SSD. Um, and this wasn't copied over to the um, NAS unit at all. This was just left on the SSD. So what I'm going to do now, um, I'm not going to worry too much about... Um, I'm not going to worry too much about using plow or anything like that because it'll take I'm pretty sure less than 10 minutes to get the plot moved onto the NAS unit so I think we've got plenty of time for that to, um, to occur while the um, next plot is being created so um, I'm just going to give it the final destination drive if I can if not I'll be forced to use plow to just uh, run a python script in the background and and move the plots off of the SSD as they're completed into the NAS unit. But I've got to play around with, with that bit. But so far so good. So I'm not going to go any further than that at the moment. We've got one C7 plot here. I need to prove that things are going to work in farmer level now. So the next thing is to do is um, to put the GT1030 graphics card into the farmer harvester. Um, hopefully get that configured. Hopefully get it recognised in the Cheer client software. Um, and then I'm going to see if it recognises that C7 compressed plot and can deal with it. Uh, all being good, we're going to start creating some more plots. Um, and I'll show you that later on if we get that far. Um, and I'll also show you the setting up of the, of the plow script should I need to use it. Okay, so here's inside my plotting machine. As you can see I've got that other NVMe mounted at the bottom that I was using when I was creating standard plots. I'm going to leave that in here um, because this machine will still create um, plots for my USB drives that are uncompressed that I'm adding to the sort of USB side of things. Um, but this is what we've got to change. This is the NVIDIA Quadro K2000 card. It is absolutely no good for decompressing plots. So we're going to take that out and replace it with the GT1030. Okay, GT1030 just sits in there nicely up against the SSD so there is plenty of room to accommodate that large heat sink so that's all uh, sitting in fine um, I'm not sure whether or not it's a good idea to run the monitor for this off that card when it's decompressing so I'm still going to continue to use the HDMI that's on the back of the motherboard Oh, things have gone pretty well, so I'm well pleased. Uh, the GT1030 went into the PC fine, and the PC started up fine. Um, I found out what was causing the issue. It's one of the USB connections you have to leave off when you power it off. Uh, sorry, power it up. Um, and it's one of these uh, cheap sort of um, USB hubs that's causing the problems I've had with the power switch. So that was good. It fired up fine. I went to the NVIDIA site, downloaded the game drivers for the GT1030, no problems there, installed that fine and then fired up the Cheer client and went to the settings down in the bottom and then up to the harvester tab at the top and lo and behold it has enabled some extra settings allowing me to say I want um, in to enable compressed plot support as soon as I did that this enable GPU harvesting 
switch was enabled, which I was able to switch on. It then prompted me to restart the harvester with a little red button at the bottom of this screen. Um, that didn't start the cheer client, just restarted the harvester in the background and everything was okay. Um, I've left all the defaults for the other settings. Um, I think it's parallel um, decompression count and things like that. For the moment, um, we'll find out if they cause any problems and need tweaking in the future. But um, I think it advises you in the cheer documentation to leave those on the defaults. So now that we've got um, a single compressed plot, if we go to the harvester option on the left hand side of the client software, it looks slightly different in the fact that there is now a GPU marker up here showing you that your GPU harvesting. And you also get this additional section here that gives you a, a chart showing what percentage of your plots are standard C C0 plots and what are compressed plots. And you get a little breakdown here so you can see I've got K32s, 1370 of them in total. And of those we've got a C0 count of 1369 which is what I had before and a C7 count of 1. So, it looks like it's working. Looks like things are ticking over. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some more plots um, and get plow running, uh, just to make things easier for me so I can just leave it to do its thing. Get plow running on the plotting machine and uh, hopefully that will start copying the plots as they're completed on the SSD over to the NAS. So, um, 28 minutes a plot. Um, you know, that's not bad. We're going to get 48 a day roughly, 48 to 50, something like that. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. So uh, next we'll have a look at that plotter then and setting up a plough. Okay, I tried to install plough and Python 3 um, and try and get it running on this machine and it was a complete and utter headache. Um, looks like the latest version of Python has an issue in it with one of the modules so it wouldn't run so I tried to backtrack to an older version of Python um, and then there was libraries missing and I gave up in the end um, and managed to find online a very simple short Robocopy script for Windows which you just run in a batch file um, and it seems to be doing something similar it's identifying the um, plot files in this directory on this machine here which is the SSD um, and hopefully it's going to copy them I think we're at about 39.3 percent it's going to copy them and move them from the SSD so they should, should shift out of there um, and that means then I can kick this off creating a lot more and we've got that SSD buffer that we need um, for these fast plot speed times so um, I'm going to leave that running and just check that it does what it's supposed to do and if it does clear out the directory and just stays looping and waiting um, I'm then going to fire off the uh, script to create some more plots and try and fill this drive up overnight so we'll see how that's going um, as I say things are farming so um, Looks like it's been a successful day, although a long day, um, but very positive at the end. So I, I'm going to put a lot of details in the description for this because you're probably going to want to know a few bits and pieces. So I'm going to try and put details of um, this particular Robocopy script in there for you in case you want to try and use it, obviously at your own risk. Um, look at it and make sure you're happy with what it does. But I'll try and pass on as much of the information of, from what I've done today to you so you can uh, use it yourself if you need to. But I hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, it's been quite a, a long day and a long one. Um, so please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon and give it a thumbs up if you can. And please do comment as well. Any questions you've got, pass them in the comments and I'll try and answer them if I can. If not, I'm sure somebody else will pipe in and help. Um, but for now, I'll say goodbye.